Jan Lacoon and Yoshio Benju published papers on neural network applications on handwriting recognition and optimizing backpropagation. Year 2000, MIT's PhD student Cynthia develops Kismet, a robot structured like a human face with eyes, lips and everything, and it could recognize and simulate emotions. So yeah, Sophia wasn't the first of its kind. Cynthia did it way before. And for all I know, Sophia could just be Kismet with heavy makeup and a few plastic surgeries. Hi. In the previous video, we discussed AI in terms of AGI and ANI. In this video, we'll see the evolution of AI throughout time and finally understand what popular terms like machine learning and deep learning really mean and how they came about. Even if you already know these things, I would still advise you to stick around as this video is actually packed with a lot of other exciting stuff and believe me, you don't want to miss it. To understand the history of AI, we need to go back a little. I mean, way back. So up till 1949, there wasn't much work on intelligent machines. Yes, there were some key events like the creation of Bayes' theorem in 1763 or the demonstration of first chess playing machine by Leonardo Torres in 1914. But the first major interest in AI developed or the first AI boom started in 1950s. So let's start from there. Now I won't cover every important event in AI but we will go through some major ones. So let's start. 1950, Alan Turing publishes Computing Machinery and Intelligence in which he proposes the imitation game. This will be later known as the infamous Turing test, a test that tests the machine's ability to exhibit intellectual behavior like a human. If a human evaluator cannot differentiate between a machine and a human in a conversation, then that machine is said to have passed the Turing test. There's also this great movie built around Alan Turing and the imitation game. I would probably recommend you to check it out. 1955, the term artificial intelligence is coined by John McCarthy and some others. It was then further described later on a workshop in 1956. This is generally considered as the birth date of AI. December 1956, Herbert Simon and Alan Newell developed the logic theorists, the first AI program. 1957, Frank Rosenwald develops the perceptron, the most basic version of an artificial neural network. By the way, the extension of this algorithm alone will later give rise to the whole field of deep learning. 1958, Lisp, developed by John McCarthy, becomes the most popular programming language used in AI research. 1959, Arthur Samuel coins the term machine learning. defining it as the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed all right at this moment i should probably explain what machine learning is but first let's talk about traditional ai so in traditional ai what programmers do is they code a lot of instructions in a machine about the task it needs to perform so in general you can define ai as a branch of computer science that focuses on creating intelligent systems which exhibits intellectual human like behavior or another way to say this is any program which resembles or mimics some form of human intelligence is ai but this is traditional ai not machine learning so what's the problem why do we even need machine learning well Traditional AI itself is really great. It has provided a lot of applications in the initial years of AI. But when we started to move towards more complex applications, for example, self-driving cars, then the traditional rule-based AI didn't just cut it. Consider for example, you tell a self-driving car to drive when it sees a green light and stop when it sees a pedestrian. What happens if both events happen at the same time? Although this is a really simple case and can be solved by checking both conditions. But what if the pedestrian is Donald Trump? Should you still stop or just drive through it? Anyways, pun aside, this should give you a brief idea about how such applications can quickly become complex as the number of variables increase and you can't expect programmers to code and handle all these conditions for all future type of events. So, what's the best approach? Well, How about an approach in which we show a machine lots of examples of some object and after the machine has learned how the object looks like we show it images of objects it has never seen before 
and ask it to make predictions about it. Similarly, by showing a self-driving car thousands and thousands of hours of data on how to drive a car, it makes it learn it. And this is machine learning. It's also how we humans also learn by watching and observing things and people around us. So here's how I will define machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI that consists of all those algorithms and techniques that can learn from the data. In essence, these algorithms give computers the capability to learn without being explicitly programmed by us. So here's AI and this is machine learning. All right, let's move on with our timeline. 1961, the first industrial robot Unimet starts working on an assembly line in General Motors plant in New Jersey. 1965, Herbert Simons predicts that machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work a man can do. Well, uh, just let, let's just move on. 1965, Eliza, the first AI chatbot which could carry conversations in English on any topic is invented. 1966, Shaky, the first general purpose mobile robot is created. 1969, well, um, 19, well in 1969, uh, is it the moon landing? Something much more important, right? Yeah. So in 1969, the famous back propagation algorithm is described by Arthur Bryson and Yu Chiho. This is the algorithm that has tremendously contributed to the success of deep learning applications we see today. Around the same time, Marvin Minsky quotes, In from 3 to 8 years, we will have machines with the general intelligence of an average human being. Are you comedy me? <laughs> Well, you know what, I'm loving the confidence man, props for that. Alright, after 50s and 60s, two decades of AI hype, the field of AI saw its first winter. This is defined as the period where the funding of AI research and development was cut down. It all started with James Lighthill 1973 report to the British Science Research Council. This report led to a drastic halt in AI. After the effects of the first AI winter faded, a new era of AI emerged. This time, people were more application focused. In 1979, the Stanford cart successfully crosses a chair filled room, becoming one of the earliest examples of an autonomous vehicle. 1981, the Japanese ministry invests $400 million in the fifth generation computer project, a project aimed to develop computers that could carry on conversations translate languages, understand images, and reason like human beings. 1986, the first driverless car, a Mercedes-Benz van equipped with cameras and sensors, drives up to 55 miles per hour on empty streets. At this point, I should probably mention that in 1984, a panel called The Dark Age of AI was held, where Marvin Minsky and some others warned about an upcoming AI winter predicting an imminent burst of the AI bubble, which actually did happen three years later in 1987. And again, it led to reduction in AI investment and research funding. This was the second AI winter and it went on for six years. Still, there were some researchers working on the field like in 1989, Jan Lacoon and some other researchers at at and and Bell Labs successfully applied the backpropagation algorithm to a multi-layer convolutional network, calling it LeNet, which could recognize handwritten zip codes. This was the first practical application of deep learning, although the term deep learning was later coined in 2006 by Geoffrey Hinton. Speaking of deep learning, let's understand what it really is. So remember when I explained machine learning is a set of all those algorithms that learn from the data? Well, among those machine learning algorithms, there is an algorithm called the perceptron, also called an artificial neural network. This algorithm is actually inspired the working of our brain. Now, a perceptron contains a single layer. This layer contains nodes called neurons. Each neuron is able to remember information about the data as it passes through it. So, the greater the number of neurons, the greater the ability of the network to remember the data. Similarly, you can add more layers to the network to increase its learning ability. Each new layer is able to extract more information or features from the input data. Not only that, but each new layer builds on knowledge learned from the previous layers. 
This way, if you're trying to build a system that can recognize cats, then the earlier layers will learn to recognize low-level features like what are edges or corners, etc. The later layers will learn high-level concepts like recognizing whiskers, ears, a cat's tail, etc. This network composed of multiple layers is called a deep neural network. And whenever you're using deep neural networks or DNNs for short, then it's called deep learning. The example I just showed you was of a feed-forward network. And there are other types of networks too, like a convolutional neural network and a long-term short-term memory network and many others. In machine learning, oftentimes human engineers need to do something called feature engineering to make it easier for the model to learn. But in deep learning, you don't need to do that. Another major advantage of deep learning is that as the amount of data increases, the deep learning models tend to get better and better. But in machine learning, after a certain point, the performance plateaus. This is because most machine learning models are not complex enough to utilize and learn from all that data. Alright, so this is AI, this is machine learning, and this is deep learning. Even though deep learning had great promises, it didn't took off in 1990s. This is because at that time, we didn't have much data, the GPUs were also not powerful enough, and the models and algorithms themselves had some serious limitations. Now, let's continue on with our timeline. 1997, Deep Blue becomes the first computer chess playing program to beat a reigning world chess champion, Gary Kasparov. 1998, Jan Lacoon and Yoshio Benjo publish papers on neural network applications on handwriting recognition and optimizing backpropagation. Year 2000, MIT's PhD student Cynthia develops Kismet a robot structured like a human face with eyes, lips and everything and it could recognize and simulate emotions. So yeah, Sophia wasn't the first of its kind, Cynthia did it way before and for all I know, Sophia could just be kismet with heavy makeup and a few plastic surgeries. Year 2000, Honda introduces Asimo Robot, the first humanoid robot to walk as fast as a human delivering trays to customers in a restaurant setting. 2005. Stanley, the first autonomous vehicle, wins the DARPA Grand Challenge. This event greatly fuels the interest in self-driving cars. 2010, ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge is launched. This was an annual AI object recognition competition. 2011, Watson, a natural language bot created by IBM, defeats two Jeopardy champions. In the same year, Apple releases Siri, a virtual assistant capable of answering questions in natural language communication. Now I want to discuss the ImageNet challenge again. Now this competition, which ran from 2010 till 2017, was responsible for some really great architectural innovations in modern AI algorithms. Perhaps the most revolutionizing year for this competition and a landmark year in AI was 2012, when a team under Geoffrey Hinton presented AlexNet a type of convolutional neural network in the competition. Now, this deep neural network was cooked up just right by Geoffrey Hinton and the team. The timing was perfect. In 2012, we had all the required ingredients to make deep learning finally work. We had the data ImageNet with millions of high-res images. We had the computation power. 2012 offered a number of great high-end GPUs. And we also had made tremendous strides in architectural improvements of neural networks. And when they combined all these elements at the right time, AlexNet was born. A network that got only 16% error rate on ImageNet competition, a 25% improvement from the previous year. This was a huge milestone. In the next year, all winning entries were using deep learning models. Finally, deep learning had taken off. What happened in the years after was innovation upon innovation in AI using deep learning approaches. Not only in research, but we saw AI being successfully applied to almost every other industry. Every year, billions of dollars are being pumped by investors in AI. Hundreds of promising new AI startups are appearing and thousands of papers are being published in AI each year. And a lot of initial success in AI can be contributed to three people. These three are known as the pioneers of modern AI. They are Geoffrey Hinton, Yoshio Bengio, and Jan Lacoon. Alright, one question you might have is 
विल देर बी अ थर्ड ए आई विंटर एंड टू बी ऑनेस्ट द आंसर इज नो इन ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन डीप माइंड सेल्फा गो डिफीटेड वर्ल्ड गो चैम्पियंस अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन ओपन ए आई फाइव बीट्स डोटा In 2020, language models like OpenAI's GPT-3 stunned the world with its abilities. So no, the next AI winter is not coming anytime soon. Winter is coming. No, it's not. It's not coming. And winter is coming. Are inko koi chup kar hai yar? Danda ban karenge. Mere ko courses bechne. Delete this. Anyways, seriously, AI it's seeing its best years just in 2020. Eugene became the first AI machine to pass the Turing test by convincing 33 judges that it was a 13-year-old Ukrainian boy. How cool and equally frightening is that? So this was part two of artificial intelligence four levels of explanation. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your colleagues. And if you haven't watched already, do watch the part one. This is Computer Vision for everyone, and I'll see you in the next video where I'll go into more detail and discuss different branches of machine learning. so stay tuned for that and do subscribe to this channel for more such videos